This Ryzen CPU has some of the pins that are broken, so I need to remove the old remnants of the old pins and then put new ones there on the solder pads. Now the old pins and their remnants have been removed and new ones can be soldered on those pads. These are all uh, memory channel pads or pins so they are important for the memory slots to work. Here is old Ryzen CPU that acts as a donor for the pins. This is AM4 CPU. Now I take five of those pins. Here are the five pins. Each of them have a little bit of solder on the end. And you can see that they are very small. Here are the tips of the tweezers for comparison. Yes, there is a small blob of solder on that pad and I need to remove that before soldering a new pin there. Now the pads are no longer touching each other on the first row. So I can proceed with soldering the new pin there. So the first pin has been soldered there. It's positioned quite good. It's not exactly in the middle but it's still alright. So I have measured with the continuity mode at the first row the first and the second pin and they are indeed connected now. There is that very small tiny amount of solder um, between and I have to remove it somehow before continuing. And now it is a little bit tilted, so I need to take it out and place it again. Now it is there quite good. I can straighten it out now that it's on the pad and then it's good. Here is the top view. It's not soldered. Yes, it's separated. <clears throat> now I need to test that it's correctly on the soldered on the pad. And then I need to bend it a little bit upwards. So the pin separated again. I need to re-solder it. So the pin is now soldered and appears to stay there also and it's relatively straight and fits to the socket then the next one now the second pin has been soldered and it is quite tilted but I have to adjust a little bit now the second pin has been adjusted upwards and it should fit the socket. Next I solder the third one. Now that third pin, that's the third from the front row from right and that has been soldered quite nicely actually. I was able to put it straight up. So no correction will be needed. Then the fourth one. Now the fourth one has been soldered. I touched this neighboring pin a bit, little bit, and it moved like that. But um, I can straighten it. And as you can see, I can move the CPU. So there is a sufficient adhesion 
in the shoulder. Just melt it properly. So, next uh, fifth and final pin. I had to redo the fourth pin, but now it's good. Now the fifth pin is there, and I must clean it and try that it indeed is securely in place and then straighten it a little bit. Alright, so a couple of the pins are not straight. So I need to adjust them a little bit. So here is a current situation. Most of them look quite good. It should fit now to the socket. Alright, this is the other angle and it seems on the first row from the right one of the pins are not in straight line so I will adjust that a little bit. The first one from the right still needs a little bit of adjustment. Now the CPU is sitting on a socket and all of those pins should be in the exact middle of the hole. But some of them could be adjusted a little bit. Now here on the second row I can see that the fourth pin is leaning on the edge of the hole and it should be adjusted. This one. I need to do that off camera so that I can hold the CPU down. Here is the pins on the different angle and again the fourth pin from the second row needs to be adjusted. This one. And it has been adjusted, now it's good. Now this should sit properly on the socket without any resistance because the socket is zero insertion force socket so any resistance means that one of the one or more of the pins are bent and need to be adjusted but this looks good it should drop into the socket quite nicely this looks now fairly good then the cleaning now the CPU is sitting on the AM4 socket and it is time to run some games with it. So previously this CPU didn't have the pins there on the second memory channel, but now that I soldered it there, I have installed two RAM sticks and both of the channels have been now populated. So let's start the machine. And there is the bioscope. And it is posting normally. Yes, that's the postcode. Now it works with two of the um, two RAM sticks. Both of the RAM sticks are now recognized.
So the CPU is repaired. Here my timings for the 3800 MHz on the PDI memories. And those were the primaries. And I have set the memory voltage to 1.5 and half. That is what is required. And then I set the vehicle to 1.3 volts and the multiplier to 48. And this is my overclock for this CPU. And of course it's good to test the stability of the CPU after the repair. And here are the results from ADA64 benchmark. So because Ryzen 5600 CPUs have only one Core complex, the memory fright bandwidth is half of what it could be. And after the ADA64 test, I will run Testman 5 at the default memory test. This look quite uh, low results for the memory speed that I have here and the timings. So one of the secondaries need to be adjusted a little bit. I should be getting almost 60,000 megabytes per second read performance should be higher. So most, most likely some of the secondaries of this TRC could be lower a little bit. Something to maybe 50 or so. And then I run the test. The temperature should be also good on the CPU. Let's uh, let it run and after it has completed this test, the memory centers are properly working. CPU has completed the test M5 memory stability test and it has passed it. So both of the channels are working properly now at this clock speed. The repair has been done successfully.